everyone. My name is Carolina Galeano, and I will be your host today. We are here at the uh, open house for the computer science program. Program, And I'm excited to be introducing a number of students and alumni and professors, as well as other staff and faculty who will be supporting our uh, virtual event today. I know some of you are here because you are simply curious about what it would be like to pursue computer science at Montgomery College. And some of you are here to compare what MC has versus other four-year uh, pathways that you could be taking right after high school. So wherever you are, we're just so glad that you're here. Um, help, we're here to help you explore and answer any questions that you have. We'll start with our students. And we have Lloyd Bekele. She's studying computer science at Montgomery College. She's attended high school in Ethiopia, and she plans to transfer at, to U University of Maryland College Park. She really loved her English classes, her health class with Professor Bird, her calc classes, and she really liked computer science 204 with Professor Kite, who you will meet later today. Her hobby is to cook. Sounds really good. Next, we have Luis Lopez. So Luis, you graduated from Magruder High School where you completed the four-year Project Lead the Way engineering program on deep learning, which is a subset of artificial intelligence. Luis's most memorable class professor is CMSC 204 with Professor Kite. He says he's a great professor, very passionate about what he does, and he takes time to make sure every student in the class understands 100%. A fun fact, he's very interested in the biological sciences and he intends on pursuing computational biology at the graduate level, eventually because he enjoys learning about various plants, animals, diseases, and ultimately his goal is to use this um, to solve health, health problems. Excited to have you with us, Luis. Next, we have Elias Enamorado. His, um, he's now pursuing computer science, mathematics, and statistics at UMBC but he did the computer science and math degrees at Montgomery College. He attended Northwood High School. And what was most memorable for him was classes with Professor Rundy. A fun fact is he enjoys programming, cycling, and reading math books. I also want to welcome Elizabeth Slatzarev. She has an associate in computer science from MC, and she's currently pursuing a computer science degree with a concentration in data science and a minor in statistics at University of Maryland College Park. She graduated from Northwest High School. She was also an early college student at MC and her most memorable project was a bookkeeping project with Professor Kite's course, um, C++ course. She also enjoys drawing. Welcome, Elizabeth. Professor Kanan Monchi. She is with us today. She's been an associate, uh, full-time associate professor at MC since 2015. She has uh, undergraduate and graduate degrees in computer science. She teaches computer science one and computer science two. She is an advisor to students in computer science and information science. She's also the curriculum advisory person for the college-wide curriculum committee. I'm not done though. She served as a software engineer at Hughes Network Systems in Maryland, where she helped design and implement the software, uh, the software of a next generation satellite system. She worked as a database analyst programmer in a startup company where she designed and developed database architecture for information systems projects. She's interested in artificial intelligence and machine learning, but in her free time enjoys biking and hiking. Welcome, Professor Munch. We also have Professor David Kite. He has been teaching at MC for 15 years. He has a PhD from the University of Maryland. He's taught at American University, University of Maryland Global Campus, and the University of Maryland in the past. He's a five-time faculty mentor for student teams in the NASA Swarmathon, which is a robotic competition to explore Mars autonomously. And teams under his leadership have won the competition twice. He's also the organizer and faculty mentor for NASA Minds teams and they investigate multiple multidisciplinary ways to enhance exploration on Mars and the moon as part of the Artemis mission to put humanity on Mars in the 2030s. In 2021, MC teams swept the, award, the awards in NASA Minds, and one team went on to present its research at an undergraduate research conference at MIT that fall. 
He teaches in the early college program and traditional MC classes in Rockville and the Germantown campuses. Welcome, Professor Kate. We also have with us Akima Rogers, where um, you will be, he's the Director of Academic Initiatives, Vice Chair and Administrator Council at the college. He will be talking to us about how you can earn college credit or college degree, college degree while in high school. So welcome everybody. But I am not quite done. <laughs> I also want you to know that there are three other individuals who are here to support us in any way that they can, and they can take on any questions as well. We have Christina Little. She's the Recruitment and College Access Specialist. Christina, would you mind telling us in just 30 seconds quickly, how can you be helpful to those who are here today and who have questions? Thank you for the introduction. I am here to answer all of your application and enrollment questions, um, as well as how to access student services here at Montgomery College. Great. We have Rhonda McLaren Scott. She's a financial aid outreach counselor. Rhonda, tell us how you can be helpful to us today. Hi, um, I've worked in financial aid for um, over 15 years here at the college and a little bit outside the college as well. And I'm here to answer any questions that you might have about financial aid and deadlines and things like that. So just let me know if you have any questions about some upcoming scholarships, Maryland State scholarships, all those things. Thank you. And Professor um, uh, Dr. Ala Webb, if you can let us know, um, I mean, obviously you're you know, chair of the science, engineering and technology at Germantown and Tacoma Park, you're a professor. So tell us, There's not, I know there's a lot you can offer, <laughs> but help us out what you can do today and talk to us about today. Uh, thank you for introduction. Uh, being at MC over 18 years, I taught different courses and here to help you to learn more about computer science and technology program, technology career options, CES course transferability, students club, and many, many other resources. I also advise students to help to choose Beth Pass at MC and future transfer options. Welcome. Thank you so much. All right, we want to get right to it. Uh, we, uh, I want to invite our professors to tell us, what does MC have to offer? What about, what's the degree about, the certificates, what do we offer, and how does MC stand apart from other schools? Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm so glad to be here in this uh, live uh, webinar, and uh, uh, I welcome everyone uh, to this uh, event. Um, so MC has uh, actually a variety of degrees in uh, computer and information sciences and technology uh, that uh, offers uh, a variety of pathways for students to go to multiple directions. Um, so the courses that are required uh, to uh, complete these degrees are offered in uh, different formats. So we have uh, regular face-to-face -face courses. We have accelerated courses, which are like seven weeks courses instead of like 14 weeks regular classes. Uh, we offer blended distance learning and Saturday courses. So these course offerings uh, provide students with uh, uh, greater flexibility in designing their uh, academic path. Uh, and uh, these courses are um, offered in uh, all the large campuses that we have in Rockville, in Germantown, and Tacoma Park. Uh, therefore, students uh, from all over the Montgomery County can take these courses uh, without um, uh, requiring expensive housing or distant commuting. Uh, we are very proud of uh, our online computer science AA program. Uh, it is a very strong program that Intelligent Peak recognized it as the nation's best in 2022. So we are very um, proud of this, uh, this uh, program. Um, so some of the things that uh, students benefit uh, from being at MC, I would like to refer to the uh, class sizes, the small class sizes compared to uh, four-year schools where uh, especially freshmen and uh, uh, sophomores usually are taking classes with 100 students uh, rather than the uh, 25 to 30 students, uh, which is the normal class size at MC. So as a result of this small class size, students can have uh, direct contact with the professors uh, that can lead actually to the improved 
academic performance and uh, kind of you know uh, help them to uh, build stronger relationship uh, with their uh, instructor. Um, MC offers competitive tuition rates compared to other colleges and universities in this area uh, that makes it very affordable to students. It's, it's an affordable option for students. And uh, also we are committed to uh, promoting diversity and inclusivity. And uh, uh, MC has a diverse student body and faculty, and we are very proud of this uh, diverse population that we have. Uh, so I'm going to turn it to Dr. Kite to continue um, on these points. I wanted to build a little bit on what Kenan said about our, uh, what Professor Monchi said about our programs. One of the things that we offer is that MC has partnerships already set up with many four-year colleges and universities. This allows us to create smooth transfers to a wide variety of four-year institutions. Um, Many of our MC students <clears throat> transfer to, um, sorry, our computer science program MC students transfer to University of Maryland, the main campus at College Park. Um, we have students that go to uh, UMBC, to UMGC, University of Maryland Global Campus. In particular, I'd like to mention that University of Maryland College Park has a very strong nationally ranked four year program, and we are the only institution that has a pathway set up so that our courses, our computer science courses, transfer directly over. Um, there aren't any other institutions that have that set up. Building on what Kenan said about financial savings and stuff like that, um, that's a really big advantage. We have had students that have transferred to um, other institutions, you know, less commonly. We have students that have gone to Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech. Um, we've had students go to Stanford, to MIT. Um, we've had a couple of students that even got scholarships there. We've got a very strong program. Building on student success, um, we've got a variety of support services in place. Um, we have tutoring, academic and career, academic advising, career counseling. Um, we have transfer um, pre-transfer advisors to answer questions about transfer to a four-year. Um, we've got program advisors giving you a lot of support if you have any questions about which particular courses would fit better. Um, and I would like to just touch on early college. I know that uh, Akima Rogers is here, the director of dual enrollment. Um, I've spent a lot of time teaching in early college, and I think one of our uh, student panelists is an early college student. Just giving you a very brief thing, early college is a program designed for high school students who take college courses at MC. Um, and when they graduate from high school um, with success in early college, they also graduate with a two-year degree and two years done completed towards their four-year, which is a huge advantage. It's a very popular program. I'll leave. Yeah. And that's that's actually a great segue uh, because Akima is going to talk to us about that. I mean, I've met so many students at graduation and commencement who are there and they're graduating from MC and high school. So Akima, can you tell us about how to earn college or uh, college credit or a degree while in high school? Uh, yes. Thank you, Carolina, uh, Dr. Kite, Dr. Webb, for this great opportunity to talk to everyone today. I'm really excited to talk about dual enrollment. And dual enrollment simply means the ability to be both a high school and a college student at the same time. So our students are fully admitted to, to Montgomery College, enrolled in regular college courses, and follow the regular curriculum, uh, either earning those college credits, or if they're in part of one of our degree programs, will actually earn a college degree. And I can actually correct uh, Dr. Kite a bit because the interesting thing is that because the college commencement occurs in May and the high school graduation occurs in June, our students actually graduate from Montgomery College before they actually graduate high school. And so uh, students can take a, a wide variety of courses. Students can start to earn some of their core courses that they need for their four-year degree or they can uh, 
take a couple of courses and continue here at MC. We are not a high school program. We are a college program for high school students. Our middle college and early college programs are, we have 22 different degree programs, including computer science, both with early college as well as through our virtual middle college. And so there's a lot of great opportunities for, um, for students. Simply go to our website, uh, check out the different options that are available and start your college career now. And so thank you very much. Thank you, Akiva, for that. So I want to um, actually bring up the fact that internships have been um, just amazing for many students at Montgomery College, right? So they've interned at a number of very prestigious agencies as well as uh, corporations. And that's only, that's just one of the ways, right, in which MC can help your computer science preparation and your experience. So now I'd like to hear from our, some of our students. And, and Lloyd, maybe you can, we can start with you. Tell us about how is, MC, what do you enjoy most about your MC experience? And how do you feel like it prepared you? Thank you, Carolina. Um, so I could talk a lot about MC because um, I feel like I am a tangible example of a product of what MC did for me. Um, the key highlights uh, that um, I enjoy about MC and how it helped me um, become a better student is um, some of the professors already mentioned it earlier, is the size class, the class sizes. Definitely having a smaller class is takes the pressure off to begin with and also has the ability to, you know, students have the ability to talk to their professors, their instructors, anybody like literally five minutes, 10 minutes before class and also after class. That definitely helps resolve any questions, any concerns that the student may have. They can also reach out to a professor or instructor, advisor, counselor anytime and they'll get um, a response quickly. Um, the tutoring center and a lot of the resources that MC provides did help me excel in my computer science courses as well. There were times where I was struggling and I had difficulties in my path, but I was able to fully overcome that and accomplish a good success out of it by the resources that MC provides. I was able to go to tutoring, um, to ask for help and also get the help I needed. Um, also, ha MC also has helped me get one of my first big internships at NIST that I'm actually interning now. So a lot of the resources at MC definitely did prepare me for a four-year college and also for a career in computer science. Awesome. I'd love to hear from Louise since you're currently a student. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience so far. Uh, so far, I mean, I have nothing bad to say about Montgomery College. I remember when I was in the position where I was choosing to, uh, choosing which college to go to. I had a couple of options, but ultimately I just decided to go to Montgomery College. And it's a decision that I don't regret at all. Uh, as Lloyd mentioned, the class sizes are small, so you get to interact with all the students. Uh, if you have a question in the middle of class, you can just interrupt or raise your hand and the professor can address it immediately. That's something that you really don't see at some of these bigger universities. And another thing is that the assignments and the classes themselves, uh, the content is challenging, but it's doable. With the help and the resources that are provided to you, anybody can get past this program and prepare you for, prepare you very well for uh, any internship or software engineering job. Example for me would be that last summer I participated in a National Science Foundation research internship at the University of Maryland uh, relating to uh, the biological sciences. And despite this being quite an advanced topic, we were discussing uh, graduate level concepts, but what I, would, what I was taught in the computer science classes uh, definitely helped me in, in that internship. And I actually knew some stuff that other students in the program didn't know, like unit testing or uh, finding uh, problems in a program or debugging programs. 
there's a lot of stuff that Montgomery College has that will help you in the in the workplace. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that, guys. And I mean, I you you all keep saying, you know, you these small classes, but I mean, can you imagine there's there's so many students who are going on to study at these big universities and they're being taught by other gra graduate students. So the fact that you get to go to class with these incredibly experienced faculty and professors who are so vested in your success, that to me is one of the biggest you know, advantages of Montgomery College. And I know you all have benefited from that. Uh, I wanna actually point out, and we're gonna hear from our alumni in a minute, but I do wanna point out a, a couple of things about just what the career outlook is like. So maybe the professors can give us a bit of a picture. What, what does it look like when you're finally out in the workforce? What are some options people have? We know this is obviously a very, a, a growing, fast growing field. Um, so, but can you talk to us a little bit about that, Professor Monchi? Uh, sure, yes. As you mentioned, um, the, the, the career in computer science um, after graduation can actually take many different paths. And this depends on uh, every individual's interest, skills, aspiration, and uh, among some of these uh, careers, uh, as you have it on the uh, on the slide, we can uh, refer to like a software developer, uh, data scientist, the cybersecurity analyst, game developer, um, technical project manager, artificial intelligence, uh, or machine learning engineers. And these are just a few examples of uh, many. Uh, possible actually careers in the computer science after graduation. And, uh, you know, I like to also mention that uh, these uh, careers that we talked about, they are very well paid, as you can see, um, uh, very well paid occupations. Uh, they are very in demand. And uh, the important thing is that the demand is increasing. So, um, you know, they, they predict that there will be more demands in five years, 10 years, 20 years. Um, so as technology continues to advance, uh, new jobs in the field will continue to emerge and it makes it an exciting and promoting career choice for uh, students who are in these fields. Um, and like, for example, machine learning didn't uh, exist uh, like 10, 10, 10, 15 years ago. And now, you know, this is one of the uh, like the hottest jobs in this field. So. Yeah, it's very exciting that students can take different paths uh, depending on their uh, skills and interests. I'd like to actually um, expand a little bit on, on what Professor Monchi said there. When I have students just starting out, they're, they're asking me, what can I do in computer science? And the thing is that it is such an enormous field with so many different things that um, so many different pathways, so many different opportunities, and they're all different. Um, and the idea, I, I remember, Caroline, you mentioned internships and stuff like that. Internships and activities like that are really important for students to figure out what they enjoy. It's not about, it's really nice to have a very good job in your future that you can do well at and get paid well, but the best part is when you get that and it's also something you're excited to do. So, so the really nice thing about these internships and about some of the other opportunities like clubs and the, um, you mentioned the uh, NASA Swarmathon and NASA Mine things, is that these are opportunities that allow a student to explore stuff and see what they enjoy and what they may not enjoy as much and which direction in this huge field they want to go. Um, we've got a bunch of clubs. We've got a computer science club, computer security club, sorry, cybersecurity club, robotics. Um, we've got some web app development. Um, we've got Raptors Who Code. There's a bunch of different things. I would just like to mention the NASA Swarmathon and the NASA Mines, because what those are really, in one sense, they're a competition, but what they are really is a year-long group research project driven by what students are interested in um, that ends up, you know, that's framed within a competition. But the best part about it is that you get an experience that is really hard to get 
anywhere else. It's basically an undergraduate research experience in stuff that you're interested in. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I do want to point out that MC's seamless transfer process to four-year schools is something that we're happy to help you with. And if you have any questions, be sure to type them in the Q&A. Our students uh, transfer to any number of universities, but these are sort of the top five, starting with University of Maryland, um, UMBC, and uh, you know UMUG, UM, UMGC, sorry about that, and Towson University. And we actually have two students who are now at University of Maryland and UMBC. So I want to bring in um, Elias and Elizabeth. Can you tell us about um, just what, how, how do you feel MC prepared you for where you are now? So with the call, um, I went to University of Maryland, Baltimore County. I was two years in the computer science program at, uh, at Montgomery College and transferred over. Um, and I want to say all my credits transferred easily. I didn't have to take any repeat courses at UMBC and what the call, I, I felt like I was a lot more prepared. I was able to ask all the questions in Montgomery College. And I really got the fundamentals of computer science. So then when I was at UMBC, I was able to get higher grades than most of my other uh, co-students uh, students there. Um, so Montgomery College really gave me that computer science foundation that I needed to successfully succeed at my four year university. Awesome. Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about your MC experience and how did it prepare you for UMD? I am a current student at UMD College Park. I'm studying computer science with a concentration in data science as well as a statistics minor. And for me, I came from the early college program where basically I was taking college courses in high school. And by the time I graduated uh, Northwest High School, where I come from, um, I already had my uh, associate um, MC as well as my high school diploma. So that was actually um, a really cool opportunity. But if I, guess, I guess like the most primary thing that I felt like benefited me was definitely this like transfer pathway from MC to UMD specifically because I always knew that I wanted to be in state and just getting all the gen eds and the computer science courses like the low level computer science courses just out of the way as well as the supplementary courses that they offer um, really built a strong foundation for me for when I actually did start at UMD so that was actually really helpful and again it is a smooth uh, transfer process. There weren't any hiccups. I didn't have to retake any courses. Um, all my credits counted towards something, whether it be the main track or gen eds or anything like that. So that was really helpful for me because now I'm technically, this is my second year at UMD, but I am graduating in the fall. So um, I'm, it definitely puts me uh, way ahead of my peers. And I guess if I had to say like um, in terms of internships and job prospects, because that's definitely a big one when I was considering um, doing this in high school. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Akima. Um, yeah, so one of the biggest things I felt that MC helped me with is actually establishing a pretty dense resume early on. I already had like a full page typed out perfect for recruiters by the time I started as a freshman at UMD. And it's no secret that computer science is a very competitive field. And you especially feel that at a four-year institution because it feels like everybody around you is competing for the same jobs. But um, having that resume coming in already, already helped me to establish um, basically what, I'm, what I wanted to do in my field. And ever since leaving MC, I've been able to obtain an internship every summer. And currently, um, I'm actually a returning uh, intern at Amazon. So that's actually like a really cool opportunity for me. And um, a bunch of other people from my cohort that I graduated with also have received really well offers. Uh, one of my friends uh, who also graduated with me from MC, he's uh, currently at Microsoft. I have another friend, uh, uh, as Professor Kite will know, Jason, he was involved in NASA Minds, and he's actually one of our very well uh, accomplished students here from this program. He actually just recently received um, two PhD offers for this upcoming fall, as well as a master's offer from Stanford. And he's literally 20 years old, like just again, just like me, second year at UMD, but already starting to get his doctorates this upcoming fall. 
Exactly. Yeah. So it's just a really good opportunity. It puts you ahead. If you're into research, if you're into actually working straight out of school, like this program really helps with that. And definitely like just having that experience before everybody else, again, just puts you way ahead of the curve, especially now with the job market. It's especially as important to just have those skills as early as possible to just get all that experience out of the way. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. So I'm excited to actually, um, I'm not announcing anything, but it's probably new for some, some people, right? So there is a new degree at University of Maryland College Park that is also offered at the universities at Shady Grove. So a lot closer to the Rockville campus. And it's called Cyber Physical Systems Engineering. Our computer science degree at Montgomery College transfers directly to universities at Shady Grove or University of College Park for the four-year degree completion. Um, as you know, the prestigious Clark School of Engineering um, at the at College Park is also at USG and it's offering this four-year degree, right? Cyber, cyber physical systems engineering. Um, I want to point out that attending, um, you know, going to un university universities at Shady Grove from Montgomery College gives you some advantages. You can um, you can have access to some scholarships because USG is a transfer partner. Um, you can also continue experiencing those small class class sizes and getting that unique attention from the faculty. And upon graduation, there are many uh, opportunities for employment at the federal government with the drone project, which was recently approved by Congress. So that is something we um, just wanted to let you all know, which is really exciting. Now, let me just point out for point of comparison, how does MC tuition compare to other two or four year institutions? And uh, let me make sure that everybody can see that. So MC, if you're in count, your in county rate would be about 5,322. Double that for the four year public institutions. And well, as you can see, private is much, much higher. So congratulations to the students and the alumni who have saved themselves a lot of money and have, I'm sure, uh, pursued scholarship opportunities by coming to Montgomery College. I also want to make sure that you know that if you're looking for information about financial aid and what does MC have to offer, we have an excellent three-minute video that you can uh, watch. You can actually scan um, using that QR code, um, or you can look it up um, I, on YouTube. It's called How to Pay for College, and that will that will give you kind of a good sense of how you know what financial aid options you have. There's also some important de deadlines that you should be aware of. Uh, March first is a very important one, as it is the Maryland State o Office of Official Financial Aid Priority deadline for all. And also for a priority deadline for fall aid at MC. Now, one thing, and keep in mind, March 1st is a hard deadline for Maryland state aid. You will not be able to receive financial aid from the state of Maryland if you do not submit your FAFSA or your MISPA by March 1st. And also keep in mind that MC's priority deadline for financial aid is will basically allow you to ensure priority that you receive the best financial aid package possible, but you can continue to apply past the March 1st deadline, obviously. So funds are limited, but the funds that are available will be awarded to the applicants that completed it at the earliest, um, the earlier, right, the better. I do wanna allow just for any any student or um, alumni who has who for maybe forgot to share something, um, or may just want to share, you know, what what is one thing that you might wish that you wish you knew going in to college, that that you know now, and that you would like to share with with our um, our guests today. From my experience, in when I was in high school, I was like a straight A student, and grades were so important to me. And um, being at MC, I also strived for really good grades as well, and I did graduate with honors. But then, after transferring and like actually going through uh, more rigorous upper level CS courses, um, you know your grades do start to fall, but 
often, you know, when they say in the CS world that a 3.5 is actually really, really good for uh, students that come out of the UMD system. So for people who are just like worried that maybe uh, going into computer science, you have to be like to maintain like a 4.0 or like even a 3.5 is honestly like pretty high. Um, students do really, really well who have like really poor GPAs uh, after a couple years in CS and like, don't let that deter you. Cause I know grades are like really heavily emphasized in high school, but when you're actually out there recruiting for jobs and trying to get a job offer, um, a lot of recruiters, I mean, GPA is important, but a lot of recruiters will uh, criticize your courses and they'll look at your personal projects if you've done any, as well as uh, your experiences. Cause that's really like all that matters. And I know like several people who work at like FANG companies who have like 3.3s and they're doing great and they keep getting return offers. And, you know, at the end of the day, just like don't stress yourself with getting that A, but um, overall, like just primarily focus on personal projects and enriching your resume and your portfolio with like side projects and things that you're interested in. Uh, clubs, activities, all of that is like very important. Thank you, Elizabeth. We uh, we want to get to um, to the questions because we have a few coming in in the chat and the Q and A. And one thing that I do want to stress that I forgot to mention earlier is that you know keep in mind Montgomery College professors are they they have a they have a number of students and their goal is to help you. Montgomery College professors aren't trying to filter students out of the program as many four-year schools with hundreds of students in those classes are trying to do. So keep that in mind. I think that you will find a very supportive environment like many of our students and alumni have mentioned. And so we're also here to help you and we'll try to get to a lot of those questions. So I wanna um, read this one from Varys. How does MC help with internship exactly? Some employers look for interns who have gotten security clearance already to save them money. How, how to get internships with security clearance? We've got partnerships set up with NIST, with, um, <clears throat> with some of the local, some of the, um, you know, the big things on, on 270. Um, we have contacts with some of them we have awareness of research opportunities and stuff, but we do not have a magic mechanism to create um, these sort of things. And for for um, clearances and stuff like that, it's even a little bit more complicated because it also often involves citizenship and stuff like that. So um, I don't have a good answer for that. Kenan, do you know anything more about no, uh, no, not really. But I was just like uh, looking at the MC website and I just saw that like, uh, and correct me, um, maybe uh, Allah or you that uh, it says that like, who are for students that are seeking internship in the fields that they require security clearance, Montgomery College offers national security studies program that uh, includes coursework on national security policy, intelligence and defense issues. So I'm not sure if this is the right way to get uh, security clearance, but uh, looks like you know that might be another path if the student is really interested into that internship and that internship position uh, requires the security clearance. Um, El Elias, um, did you have something to add about this? Hey, yeah, so I do have some experience in getting some internships um, because of Montgomery College with a secret clearance. Um, I remember I applied for DOD with the Defense Information Systems Agency. Um, they have internship programs every summer for a computer science training. And part of their internship questionnaire or interview was what experience do you have in programming? Well, I was like, I did this project, I did this project. And a project that they were really interested in that was a uh, network log management one that I did and they're like, oh, you did that. We actually need that. So the skills that and the projects that I did at Montgomery College helped me apply for an internship that got me a secret clearance with the DOD. So just wanted to put my experience out there. Thank you. And there was also a question about AI classes at MC. Are there any 
So as far as I know, there is uh, there are classes that are required for AI and machine learning. So some of the courses that are offered in the computer science uh, degree program, uh, they are actually requ required to learn artificial intelligence and machine learning like uh, uh, Python um, or like um, math classes. Uh, the, the math classes are like uh, Calc 1, Linear Algebra, these are, and uh, uh, Statistics. These are really required to uh, learn machine learning and AI. So uh, as far as I know, we do not have a specific uh, like a course on AI, uh, but uh, these are some of the courses that uh, you can use uh, in order to uh, kind of proceed to learning uh, AI and machine learning. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, like, you know, you have to like um, have basic understanding of different types of machine learning algorithms. Um, like, you know, you should uh, be familiar with uh, how to work and manipulate data. Um, like, for example, you should uh, be able to uh, work with SQL, Excel, like uh, these kinds of uh, software. Uh, but um, but as far as I know, uh, uh, there is no specific course that is called uh, AI or machine learning. Okay. Uh, like David, if you have any. Yeah, well, uh, exactly what Canon said. Um, the... The basic thing is that um, Montgomery College offers courses by and large that would fit in the first two years of a four-year degree. And machine learning um, and AI are fourth-year courses at, at um, University of Maryland, for example. I took, um, I took AI as a 400-level course, 421, at University of Maryland about a million years ago, but still. And, um, you know, we have a, a number of questions in the chat that I want to get to. So let me um, let me actually go to uh, we had a question from Ran. I'm not going to try to say the last name. <laughs> so I heard in past in the past meetings that tuition is free for early college program. Today, I thought I heard different. Can you please clarify? Akima, I know you are here and I'd like to. Uh, to have everybody hear the answer. So can you let us know? Uh, sure, and I also put the answer uh, in the chat. And so uh, this is even more exciting news that uh, beginning in the fall, for MCPS students taking college courses, the college tuition, the college fees, as well as any required textbooks and instructional materials will be at no cost to the student. And so a student, when uh, uh, Carolina showed the, um, the, the cost savings, um, and so uh, in addition to the savings from just um, starting out your college career at a community college, if you start out through dual enrollment, then um, uh, much of that $5,000 can be covered, whether through individual courses or completing actual degrees. And so, and students can earn the same regular credit that they can continue here and finish out their associate degree or transfer to four years. So as long as you're an MCPS student uh, starting in the fall, it'll all be covered. Excellent. I have a, there's another question that I want everybody to hear the answer. So somebody was asking about um, computer science clubs at the Tacoma Park campus and how do we join any club at Montgomery College? Um, who would like to, uh, maybe Dr. Webb, would you like to take uh, that? I posted some uh, link to our website where all the clubs are listed and even the club is for example officially listed in Rockville you can still join it because uh, most of the meetings are done in multiple modes students can join virtually students can attend events and so on and if somebody is at Tacoma and you couldn't find the club you're welcome uh, to propose and we can open your club so we're always here for you for any opportunities you have Great, and you can look up any any clubs on our website. So if you go to MontgomeryCollege.edu and there's a search bar, that search bar is super helpful. Consider it um, your best friend when you're searching for things in our website. 
So there's a question about, um, you know, are students able to transfer to UM, UMDC? I'm guessing that's UMCP, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, the computer science program. I'll let you answer that in the chat, but I want to make sure everybody knows how can how can we find out what the transfer requirements are for any particular institution? Uh, the best way uh, to do this is first of all look at our transfer program website where we list all our transfer agreements and of course contact us directly at cs at montgomerycollege.edu and we're happy uh, to discuss any questions you have. But our courses are transferable to University of Maryland College Park, uh, to UMBC, and you have here a couple of students who is an example of uh, that successful transfer. Uh, there are certain requirements, and I did post that LEP requirements, which is limited enrollment program. Uh, you do need to work with an advisor when you are at Montgomery College to make sure that you do follow the pathway and uh, you do uh, complete courses in a way how they are set up and do not repeat multiple times so you're successfully uh, transferred to the program. So we are here for you. Advisors are available and on this uh, webinar, you do have uh, Professor Monshi and Dr. Kite and myself who are advisors of computer science program. We had a question from Diego. He's asking, what technologies do you teach in web development? That is a whole different um, program, correct? So if you wanted to look for any particular, any program in like web technologies or digital media, you can look that in the, uh, you can look that up within our website. And um, so I recommend that you, that you check that out, Diego. Any program you're interested in, we have a wonderful site, catalog dot Montgomery College dot edu that has a lot of good things to learn about all our programs and degree and certificates and courses. We have another um thank you. We have another interesting question. Um it's uh the question is mastering hardware and software requires different skill sets. How how do you design the curriculum so that they're not so that I'm guessing students are not stretched out too thin. That's, I actually started typing an answer to that. Uh, Dr. Webb, do you want to take that or? Uh... Uh, you, uh, I can just start saying that Montgomery College does have computer engineering, computer science program, and also you have cloud computing and cybersecurity means that there are different variations of what you need. Computer science itself concentrating on software, but there are a lot of other options available. And Dr. Kite, I will pass this to you. And that was pretty much what I was going to uh, say was what Dr. Webb said. Your, the, the original question was a very good question because, in fact, our computer science degree is very dense. It needs to be very dense because it needs to be rigorous so that College Park and other schools will accept it. Um, and so our students will do well. So if you want to do hardware and software and gain skills in both, that isn't a two-year degree, that's a four-year degree or two and a half, you know, three years. So we have computer engineering, we have, um, there's, if you have the Venn diagram of all the things you can do in computer science and all the things you can do in computer engineering, there's a significant overlap and it depends. Um, so yes, there's a lot of skills there, and no, you can't really get all the skills that you need to be a successful computer engineer and all the skills you need to be a successful um, software engineer, computer scientists, all in a two year. It's way more than 60 credits. Thank you. We are uh, running out of time, so I may only get to two more questions that have been, um, well, <laughs> we're getting a lot of questions all of a sudden. So, Yes, the uh, this has been recorded and we will be sharing it on YouTube. Um, so you can make sure that you go to youtube.com, look up Montgomery College and subscribe if you want to get a notification for when this goes up live, but it'll be up in a, within a week. Um, let's see, we've got here a number of questions. I already applied to the early college program at Tacoma Park Silver Spring. Is it possible to move to another campus location after being confirmed at Tacoma Park? Question for Akima. Please email the early college address that is in the letter, your confirmation letter for any changes or 
um, uh, specific questions like that. Thank you and congrats on being accepted. All right, there's uh, another question probably for you as well. Thank you for the previous answer clarification on IB students. Is this a good idea to abandon IB for early college? One of the great things about Montgomery College, I mean, Montgomery County is that there are a lot of choices for students. IB, uh, other um, programs that the high schools offer and as well as with the college. Um, it's really about preference and what your, your long-term goals are. Talk to your high school counselor and your parents. Uh, talk to advisors within our degree programs, uh, such as um, uh, Dr. Mondi, Dr. Kite, Dr. Webb, uh, and really decide what you'd like to do. That's really, there's really not a definitive answer because there's many different ways for you to be successful. IB is one of them. Early college, dual enrollment is certainly a great opportunity. So uh, I wish I had a more direct answer, but good luck to you. Another question from Chaitanya, um, the, the question is, any certification courses for data science? Uh, Montgomery College does have data science certification and also a new data science uh, degree as well. I posted the link uh, to the catalog. Again, catalog.montgomerycollege.edu is your best source to start. And after that, contact us, please, and we'll be happy to address your question. That's right. Any any final uh, thoughts while we begin to to wrap up? We've, we've taken a lot of the questions, and I believe we've answered most of them. Um, this is your this is your chance, panelists. I really enjoyed hearing from everybody, especially our students and alumni. Professor Kite, were you going to say something? I was actually just saying that I spotted a question from Yam Chanapat Ram Chanapatna directed at um elizabeth you were you were in uh you've got an amazon in internship right yeah yeah so um that question was aimed at her um the question was this is at umd did they allow you to apply for summer internship as a freshman how do they differentiate from a freshman who's in their first year of college Apparently, the way they determine your status is you're not labeled based on the number of years that you're at that university, it's based on your credits. So I took um, I took more than 60 credits at my time at MC because I took a lot of extra courses. So when I came into UMD, I already had like 74 or 76 credits. And as a result, that already put me at like a sophomore uh, standing or junior standing. I don't remember what the credit load is like at UMD, even though technically I was a freshman, but regarding the internships, um, UMD doesn't monitor your internships, applications, or status unless you apply through their Career for Chirps uh, portal, which is like their kind of like we're helping you get an internship or a career fairs, in which case they have to because uh, whatever you uh, accept reflects on the university. But for me particularly, um, I never really obtained an internship through a career fair. Uh, this was a lot of like just independent applications and like you know, talking to recruiters on LinkedIn and that that sort of thing, networking. So um, you can get an internship whenever you want. It doesn't even have to be during the summer. People uh, work during the fall and spring semesters and are interns. So it just, it's really up to you. And it's just, it is a lot harder as a freshman going into UMD to get an internship because you don't have that resume. You are taking like Java one, Java two, which is for a lot of students, their first programming courses ever. So from a recruiter standpoint, most of the time for their software engineering internships, especially at companies like Meta, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, they're not really looking for students, uh, freshman students that don't really have a resume or previous internship experience until they're at least like uh, junior level. A lot of UMD students will try to get their first internships in the junior summer year, but a lot of MC students that came to UMD, we already had internships experience because MC gave us those credits when we were in high school. So yeah. And last question for you, Elizabeth, did you apply to University of Maryland as a transfer or non-transfer? So technically, if you look at my transcript right now, I am class of 2025 because I still had to apply as if I was a regular high school student applying for college. So just because you take all the credits and you graduate with your associates, it doesn't necessarily mean um, you are, this is from the early college perspective. So like I'm a high schooler going into um, UMD. 
uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm accepted automatically just because I have that degree. Now, if I were, I know if I'm a transfer student, there's a program called MTAP where you are like, I think guaranteed acceptance into any transfer in institution in Maryland from like places like Montgomery College, but that's um, like a different perspective from mine. So for UMD specifically, I did have to apply as a regular student and I still had to give them like that essay, the college essay and my stats and everything like that. But having that resume, because UMD accepts resumes, um, I think it definitely helped me get a scholarship to UMD as well as uh, getting in. And thank you, Elizabeth. And I want to expand a little bit on that first. If I could afford you over Amazon, I'd hire you to be part of our staff. So thank you for being such a great early college ambassador and student. Um, so uh, early college dual enrollment students uh, must apply as a freshman with advanced standing because of those credits. And the University of Maryland, like many colleges and universities around the country, consider transfer students as credits earned after the high school diploma. But like Elizabeth, you come in as a freshman and then a year or two later, you're able to graduate once those credits get, get transferred uh, through. And it is to the benefit of the student to come in as a first year student than as a transfer. And we can talk more about that in a different uh, setting. Uh, but uh, it is a great opportunity for students to, to come in, whether it's AP credits, IB, or um, a regular earned credit. So uh, thank you for allowing me to interject on that. No, thank you. And I do just want to remind everybody that if you're interested in learning more about dual enrollment, you can go to montgomerycollege.edu forward slash DEP for dual enrollment program. But as well, you can scan, um, you know, use your phone to scan that QR code and learn more about the CS program and really anything that we can help with. We're happy to answer any questions um, offline once we've logged off. Uh, those uh, contacts have been shared. Thank you, everybody, so much for sharing from your experience. Thank you for those who joined us. And don't forget, you can follow Montgomery, um, you can follow MCTV Social. Uh, but thank you all so very much. It was a great evening. <laughs>